Today's lesson is from unit three, where we're going to start talking about advanced linear equations. So learning target one, we'll start us off where we can be able to say after we're done, is that I can evaluate absolute value expressions. Okay, so there's some a vocab here that we need to revisit. Some of these we've already talked about, but obviously we haven't talked about what an absolute value is this, yet this year. So we're gonna go ahead and start talking about that too. Okay, so an expression where we've had expressions before, especially in our first unit, um, but this is just a reminder that um, expression consists of sums and or products of numbers and variables. Okay, so an example of that would be like seven times x, that's an expression, where it's a multiplication of seven x. Um, you could have two x minus nine. You could also have um, x squared plus 10x minus two, something like that. So there's lots of different expressions, some very long, some very short. It kind of just depends on what you're given. Okay, we've also talked about evaluate. Evaluating is to find the value of the expression when the variable is replaced by a given number. Okay. Now, on your notes, you are already starting with an example that they gave you. It says given the number or given that x equals negative 2, they want you to evaluate when 4x plus 14 is your expression, okay? So here, if I'm asked to evaluate, then that means that 4 times x, x since it's equal to negative 2, I need to plug that in, right? So I'm going to replace it. So replace x with the value of negative 2. Now notice that everything else in that expression stays exactly the same. I still have the 4 multiplied to whatever x was. I still have the plus 14. But now I have a new expression where it's just numerical. It's not algebraic anymore. So now I can figure out what the answer is because they're all numbers. So I know what 4 times negative 2 is which is negative eight. And then I know what negative eight plus 14 is, which is six. And that would be my answer. So that's the, the idea behind evaluating, okay? So anytime they ask you to evaluate, that means you should end with a numerical answer when you're done, a one number answer. So here, the new thing that we're going to start talking about is absolute value. So absolute value is the distance from zero for any non-zero number which is always positive. Okay, so this one gets kind of confusing because a lot of kids have seen absolute value and they only think it's the opposite of what you're given. And that is not the case. Absolute value describes your distance from zero for the given number. So an example, if they give you 
the absolute value of negative 6, and I was to plot that on a number line, so right here, I want to know what my distance is from negative 6 to 6. Now if I was to count that, I would go, well, negative 5 is 1, negative 4 is 2, negative 3 is 3, negative 2 is 4, negative 1 is 5, and then 0 gets me 6. Okay, so that would be the distance from negative 6 to 0, okay? So when I answer this, I'm asking you what is the distance from 0 to negative 6? And so it should always be a positive answer. So even if I gave you the absolute value of 6, that should also be 6 because if I look at that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? Looking there, that is also 6 if you counted it back, right? We counted to get to 6, like the same way we counted to get to negative 6. So it's the same idea, okay? So always keep that in mind that since distance cannot be negative, absolute value cannot be negative. So it's always going to be a positive number because we're finding the distance from zero. And since that's always positive, because you're always counting the distance, then that's your, the idea that you should have when you're doing this, okay? So please keep that in mind. Okay, so now here we have some expressions that we want to be able to evaluate the following expressions given particular values. Now notice that these expressions have absolute value bars in them that we have to take in consideration when we're evaluating. So like here, if I'm looking at three minus h in absolute value signs plus 13, the first thing I need to do is to plug in the values that I have for variables. So since I see that there's an h, I'm going to plug in the value that represents h, which is 5. So I'm going to plug in 5, and then from there, now I'm going to simplify. Now, absolute value signs are just like parentheses, brackets, and braces. Okay, They are a grouping symbol. So you need to take care of everything inside the absolute value sign the same way you would do for a parenthesis. So here I need to do 3 minus 5, which would be negative 2. Now here, because it's absolute value, you cannot just get rid of the absolute value after you do 3 minus 5. Okay, That is a misconception that happens a lot because we think it's exactly like parentheses. The only thing that it has in common with parentheses is that you have to simplify things inside first. Okay, before you do things on the outside. So here, the only way to get rid of an absolute value sign is to take the absolute value. So what that means is, is what we did before. So here, when I said negative 6, or the absolute value of negative 6, I was asking you what the distance from 0 to negative 6 was. You need to be able to tell me what that distance is. So over here, what's the absolute value of negative 2, or what's the distance from 0 to negative 2, well, that would be 2. So notice that now it's changed. It's become positive, but it always stays positive when you're doing that. So anything on the inside, whether it's negative or positive of the absolute value sign, stays or becomes positive, okay? And then I can finish up my expression from there. So 2 plus 13 gives me 15, okay? And all the rest of these are pretty similar. So I have 16 minus the absolute value of g plus 9. I'm going to plug in what g is. That looks like it's negative 4. So I plug that in. So now negative 4 plus 9 gets me 5. Absolute value of 5, so the distance from 0 to 5 is 5. 
and then 16 minus 5 is 11. So notice I did nothing to that negative sign on the outside of the absolute value sign. I just looked at 5 and said, what is the absolute value of 5? Okay. Once it's outside the absolute value, your expression can be negative afterwards, but it just depends on what's on the inside. That's what's changing to positive, okay? And always positive. Now look at our example three here, where there's all variables. So when I do this one, I'm going to have parentheses for f, plus parentheses for g, then minus h. Now h is on the outside, so I don't necessarily have to have parentheses here, but if you want to, it might make you feel better just to do the same thing for everything, okay? So f is three, g was negative four, and h is five, okay? Notice that the, the signs on the outside of those parentheses stayed the same, and now I'm going to simplify the expression just like I did the previous one. So, 3 plus negative 4 gets me negative 1. The absolute or the parentheses for 5, I don't need those, so I'm going to say minus 5. Now I need to take the absolute value of negative 1. So the distance from negative 1 to 0, that is 1. So I'm going to say 1 minus 5. 1 minus 5 on the outside is negative 4. So notice here I got a negative number for my answer, which is fine. It's just inside the absolute value, it's not. Okay. So then from there, now I want to take these expressions and simplify them just like I did before. There's just a lot more going on here. So here for number one, I have 2a plus c in front or inside the absolute value plus 2b. So here I'm going to plug in what a is what C is, and what B is. Um, A is negative 2, B is negative 3, and C is 2, it looks like. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to simplify. So multiplication would be next. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Okay. Inside the absolute value signs, I get negative 4 plus 2. That'll be negative 2. Okay. So here it's absolute value of negative 2. So that's the distance from 0 to negative 2. That would be 2. And now I can finish simplifying my expression. So next is multiplication on the outside. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then 2 plus a negative 6 is negative 4. And that would be my answer. Okay. Um, number 2, I have uh, a lot of variables here, but I'm just going to do this one at a time. So 5, parentheses for A, plus parentheses for B, absolute value bar, plus absolute value bar 3 times parentheses for B, plus 2 times parentheses for C, absolute value bar. Okay, and I'm going to plug in my values here. So A is negative 2, B is negative 3, and I have two places for that, and C is 2. Okay, and then I want to simplify. So here, there's a negative sign on the, abs out on the outside of the absolute value sign, so I'm going to keep it. Remember, don't just lose something just because you for like it's not being handled right at the moment. Make sure you keep stuff that you're gonna need later. So five times negative two is negative ten, plus a negative three, then plus three times a negative three on the other one, that's negative nine, plus two times two, which is four. Okay, and then simplify those. So negative 10 plus a negative 3, that would be negative 13. Negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. Okay, now here I get to take the absolute value of two numbers at the same time. So now 
absolute value of negative 13 is 13, but notice there is a negative sign on the outside. So even though I took the absolute value of negative 13 and made it 13, it will stay negative 13 once it comes out because of that extra um, negative sign, okay? And then the absolute value of negative five would be five, okay? So now I'm really taking negative 13 plus five here, not 13 plus five. So I get negative eight as an answer, okay? Next one, I have three parentheses, three times, or sorry, absolute value of three times parentheses for B, minus eight times parentheses for C, absolute value bar minus three, okay? So I'm gonna plug in my B, which is negative three, and my C, which is two, okay? So on the inside, three times negative three is negative nine, and then negative eight times two. Remember, that's a negative eight, not a minus eight, or an eight by itself. It is together. They are one and the same. Negative eight times two is a negative 16, minus three on the outside, negative nine minus 16, or plus a negative 16, gets you negative 25. Absolute value of negative 25 is 25. Notice same thing I did up here. I kept the 13 that came out of the absolute value and put it in parentheses, same thing here. Because the three on the front of the absolute value needs to be multiplied to 25. Okay, three times 25 gets me 75. Then minus three is 72. And that would be my answer, okay? Last one here. So here I have negative three absolute value. Now here, because there's just the B inside, I'm just going to put a negative three. I don't need the parentheses unless you really need them. Okay. And actually let's go back because I'm going to put it in with a different color too. Now here you have a couple parentheses though, one for A and one for C. Notice that these are parentheses for A plus C, not absolute value. So make sure that sometimes they're gonna be in the same problem together. So I put in my B, which is negative three, I put in my A of negative two, and I put my C in of two, okay? Then from here, absolute value of negative three is three, still being multiplied to the negative three in front, plus two parentheses. I don't really need those parentheses for the negative two and two now, okay? Now I'm gonna do order of operations, so negative two plus two, gets me zero, okay? Negative three times three gets me negative nine. Two times zero gets me zero. Negative nine plus zero is negative nine, okay? And that would be my answer. So hopefully you understand that when you're dealing with the absolute values, um, the answer you get out should always be positive and because you're talking about the distance, not the opposite, okay? Also, be wary of things being in front of absolute value bars because that means you're going to be multiplying, like the negative sign in number two and the three and the negative three on the last two, okay? So, and remember to do your order of operations in the order that you're supposed to, okay? Or you're not going to get the correct answer. All right, have fun.